Two weeks ago, I posted my review of the Yao Medina surf skate with Meraki trucks. And I was very positive about this board, except for one little thing. Every time I tried to do a carve grind, my favorite trick, I would come to a complete halt and get into some pretty dangerous situations. It just kept happening over and over and over. Every time I'd hit the coping, I would just come to a dead stop and fall. But I was dedicated to try and find out how to solve this. It's one of my favorite tricks to do. I can do it well on pretty much every other system that I have. So I started investigating to see if I could come up with a solution. A carve grind occurs when you're riding in a bowl and you make a big arc turn and as you're carving up the wall you get to the very top and the metal of your trucks makes a connection with the metal of the coping of the bowl. You're still going to be leaning into the bowl so that's what separates it from a stand-up grind. And you continue on your path and back down the bowl as if you were just doing a regular carve. So this is me now after doing a lot of work to adjust my technique to figure out what was going wrong and how to fix it. So stay tuned and I'll walk you through those steps. In my initial review, I speculated that the softness of the metal of the trucks compared to carvers was what was slowing it down and preventing me from grinding. But then looking on Instagram, I could see other people doing it, so I knew it was something with my technique. But what I didn't want to do is keep failing at the top of a five foot concrete bowl. So I thought I'd try to seek out something a little bit safer to learn on and try to figure this out. So I brought the board to my local mini ramp, which is a more mellow transition. It's masonite surfaced and it's only about three feet tall. And lo and behold, on the very first try, just stuck the 50-50 grind, uh, managed to get some grinds where only the front trucks were on without hanging up and actually I found out that this board really really kills it on a mini ramp. It turns so tightly that you can ride it almost like you're riding in a bowl um, just by making your turns without any kick turns. Um, got a few slash grinds in as well so that's where you just get the back truck pivoting on the coping and it really encouraged me to think, yeah, this is possible if I keep working at it. After a few failed attempts, I even managed to stick the stand-up 50-50 grind on the Yao Meraki tracks, which I was super stoked about. All right, guys, I think I made a breakthrough in the Yao grinding situation. And the reason I've been having trouble is not necessarily because of the trucks being a softer metal, but because typically when I do my carve grinds, it's at the corner of a bowl. It just tends to be the place where I have the highest peak of my turn. It just is a really nice place to get your grind in. You can wrap it around. Now the problem is that the looseness of the Yao trucks, when your pressure is coming out like that on the carvers, the wheels help you lock you in place and wrap around issue with the yaw is when you've got that outward pressure that's causing your truck to turn and the inside of the wheel then ends up dragging and stopping you so that's what was causing me to just feel like my board was jamming on the brakes is literally my trucks were turning and the inside of the wheel would then drag on the inside of the bowl so I've kind of done some sleuthing and figured out that that's the issue. So I'm going to try again in the bowl by carving just on the flat part rather than around the corners and see if that works better. So yeah, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt here that I might have uh, done you wrong in my review earlier. Looking back at this video now, you can see that's exactly what happened. My truck turned so much that the inside of the wheel was rubbing on the wall, acting almost like a roller skate brake. So what my strategy is going to be is to begin with trying to recreate that mini ramp situation. Rather than going for the corner, I'm trying to get a grind in on a straight wall and see how that goes. And it did work out. I managed to get a quick kiss of the coping with the front truck. Enough proof of concept for me to take it to the corner 
and try my next idea which was to go with a slash grind rather than a carved grind. A slash grind is a trick that I first started learning when I began riding mini ramps. And what it is is essentially almost like a 5-0 grind on a skateboard where you only grind on your back tracks but you're not really doing a long grind. You're just kind of twisting and pivoting on your back tracks. The whole time your front track is not even making contact with the coping. So essentially you go up the ramp and when you reach the top you initiate a kick turn and lock your back truck on and use that as a pivot point to turn back down into the ramp. Doing this takes the front truck completely out of the equation and gets used to the feel for putting your weight on your back foot when you grind and you need to be back foot heavy to make this work. So the final step to making this work is actually trying to get those grinds going around the corners in a proper carve grind. And I made a few adjustments based on what I'd learned so far. So rather than just riding in my normal carving style as I would, I was making a clear effort to get more weight over my back foot like I did on those slash grinds. But I would still use my front foot to touch my front trucks down onto the coping. I also made a conscious effort to make sure my foot placement was right. And this meant putting my foot further back than I usually would have it over the front trucks. This would make sure that I wasn't jackknifing so that I could get that little clip in of the front trucks on the coping and then release easily. At the end of all this experimentation, I was able to find a way to get a line in that would incorporate all three of these different types of grinds. And eventually, I got the courage to actually get both front and back trucks locked onto the coping around that corner. And I rode out of it perfectly fine. So I'm going to keep working to get this better, but I'm hoping that breaking this down for you and showing you how I figured it out might help you in your progress right, as well. So a few pointers when you're learning the carve grind. Let's recap that when you're doing it on the Yao. First step, if your kick turns are solid, you're going to want to learn how to do a slash grind. So you're coming up on a bit of an angle, initiating your kick turn before you get to the top. Just letting that back truck hook on and pivoting back down. That's a really good start when you're coming in with some speed. You'll even get some glide on that as you're going. But it avoids bringing the front truck into the equation. The next thing, if you can find an area without a corner, that's going to let you come up at more of an angle like this, so it's not going to be as jarred when the trucks don't connect. So you're avoiding the corner where you have that really strong outward pressure. And the last thing when you're ready to start grinding around corners on your yao is to make sure your feet are in a good position first. So whereas usually if I'm carving, I might have my foot roughly like that, every time I made this work, on the grind, I move my foot back a little bit extra to make sure that I wasn't jackknifing those front trucks and I'm putting a lot more weight on my back foot. So what you want to do is get your back foot being the main connection and the front foot just lightly keeping the board on the rail or on the coping and then back down. Hope that helps. Finally, I had to be a bit introspective and ask myself, does this change how this board stands in my review that I posted? And at the end of the day, I don't think it does. Everything I said still holds true. This board, without a doubt, is harder to do carve grinds. So that is something that needs to be factored in. But showing the steps that I went through to learn, you can learn how to do them but it's still not gonna be as comfortable as some of the other setups I've used. So this board still is a really great board. It's one that I highly recommend and one that I can now say you can use to its full extent in the bowl with a little bit of practice. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you're interested in pow surfing and surf skating and river surfing, lake surfing, pretty much any kind of surfing, you might be interested in the other content on my channel, so I'd encourage you to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.